ஹோம் பூர பூவ ஸ்வஹ தூர்வரேணியம் பிரகோதேவ தீமீ தீயோ யோ நச்சோதாத் ஓம் சாந்தி 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 நமஸ்கார் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இந்த லாஸ்ட் வீடியோ ஆஃப் சுவாமி விவேகானந்தாஸ் இன்ஸ்பயர்டு டாக்ஸ் the last paragraph was self by the self therefore love is the law of life to rise to this is to be perfect but the more perfect we are the less work so called can we do the satvikas see and know that all is mere child's play and do not trouble themselves about anything and now starts the <coughs> video number 5 it is easy to strike a blow but tremendously hard to stay the hand stand still and say in the o lord i take refuge and then wait for him to act friday july 5 until you are ready to change any minute you can never see the truth but you must hold fast and be steady in the search for truth Charvakas, a very ancient sect in India, were rank materialists. They have died out now and most of their books are lost. They claimed that the soul, being the product of the body and its forces, died with it, that there was no proof of its further existence. They denied inferential knowledge, accepting only perception by the senses. Samadhi is when the divine and human are in one or it is bringing sameness. Materialism says the vice of freedom is a delusion. Idealism says the vice that tells of boundaries is delusion. Vedanta says you are free and not free at the same time. Never free on the early plan but ever free on the spiritual plan. be beyond both freedom and bondage we are shiva we are immortal knowledge beyond the senses infinite power is back of everyone pray to mother and it will come to you o mother give of walk eloquence thou self existent come as the walk upon my lips hindu invocation walk means speech that mother whose voice is in the thunder come thou in me kali thou time eternally thou force irresistible shakti power saturday july 6th today we had sankracharya's commentary on vyasa's vedanta sutras om tat sat according to sankra there are two phases of the universe one is i and the other thou and they are as contrary as light and darkness so it goes without saying that neither can be derived from the other on the subject the object has been superimposed the subject is the only reality the other a mere appearance the opposite view is untenable matter and the external world are but the soul in a certain state is a reality in a reality there is only one all our world comes from truth and untruth coupled together samsara life is the result of the contradictory forces acting upon us like the diagonal motion of a ball in a parallelogram of forces the world is god and is real but that is not the world we see just as we see silver in the mother of pearl where it is not <clears throat> this is what is known as adhyasa or superimposition that is a relative existence depending dependent upon a real one as when we recall is seen we have seen for the time it exist for us but that existence is not real or some say it is as when we imagine heat in water which does not belong to it so really it is something which has been put where it does not belong 
taking the thing for what it is not we see reality but distorted by the medium through which we see it you can never know yourself except as objectified when we mistake one thing for another we always take the thing before us as the real never the unseen thus we mistake the object for the subject the atma never becomes the object mind is the internal sense the outer sense is are its instruments in the subject is a trifle of the objective fine power that enables him to know i am but the subject is the object of its own self never of the mind or the senses you can however superimpose one idea on another idea as when we say the sky is blue the sky itself being only an idea science and ne science are all there are but the self is never affected by any ne science ne science means ignorance relative knowledge is good because it leads to absolute knowledge but neither the knowledge of the senses nor of the mind nor even of the vedas is true since they are all within the realm of relative knowledge first get rid of the delusion i am the body then only can we want real knowledge man's knowledge is only a high degree of brute knowledge one part of the vedas deals with the karma forms and ceremonies the other part deals with the knowledge of brahma and discusses religion the vedas in this part teach of the self and because they do their knowledge is approaching real knowledge knowledge of the absolute depends upon no book nor upon anything it is absolute in itself no amount of study will give this knowledge it is not theory it is realization cleans the dust from the mirror purify your own mind and in a flash you know that you are brahma god exist not birth or death nor pain nor misery nor murder nor change nor good or evil all is brahma we take the rope for the serpent the error is ours we can only do good when we love god and he reflects our love the murderer is god and the clothing of murderer is only superimposed upon him take him by the hand and tell him the truth soul has no cast and th- to think it has is a delusion so are life and death or any motion or quality the atma never changes never goes or comes it is the eternal witness of all its own manifestations but we take it for the manifestation and eternal illusion without beginning or end ever going on the vedas however have to come down to our level for if for if they told us the highest truth in the highest way we could not understand it heaven is a mere superposed superstition arising from desire and desire is ever a yoke a de- uh, uh, degeneration never approach anything except as god for if we do we see evil because we throw a veil of delusion over what we look at and then we see evil get free from these illusions be blessed freedom is to lose all illusions in one sense brahma is known to every human being he knows i am but man does not know himself as he is we all know we are but not how we are all lower explanations are partial truth but the flower the essence of the vedas is that the self in each of us is brahma every phenomenon is included in birth growth and death appearance continuance and disappearance our own realization is beyond the vedas because even they depend upon that the highest vedanta is the philosophy of the beyond to say that creation has any beginning is to lay the x at the root of all philosophy maya is the energy of the universe potential and kinetic until mother releases us we cannot get free the universe is ours to enjoy but want nothing 
to want is weakness want makes us beggars and we are sons of the king not beggars sunday morning july 7th infinite manifestation dividing itself in portions still remains infinite and each portion is infinite brahma is the same in two forms changeable and unchangeable expressed and unexpressed know that the knower and the known are one the trinity the knower the known and the knowing is manifesting as this universe that god the yogi sees in meditation he sees through the power of his own self what we call nature shade is simply god's will so long as enjoyment is sought bondage remains only imperfection can enjoy because enjoyment is the fulfilling of desire the human soul enjoys nature the underlying reality of nature soul and god is brahma but it brahma is unseen until we bring it out infinity is one without a certain ever indivisible and unmanifested by infinite manifestation the swami means the universe both visible and invisible although it is made of countless forms which are limited by their very nature still as a whole it is always infinite ne even a portion of it is infinite as each such portion is inseparable united with it it may be brought out by parman pramantha or friction just as we can produce fire by friction the body is the lower piece of wood om is the pointed piece and dhyana meditation is the friction when this is used that light which is the knowledge of brahma will burst forth in the soul seek it through tapas holding the body upright sacrifice the organs of senses in the mind the sense centers are within the organs without so derive them into the mind and through dharana concentration fix the mind in dhyana brahma is omnipresent in the universe as is butter in milk but friction makes it manifest in one place as churning brings out the butter in the milk so dhyana brings the realization of brahma in the soul all hindu philosophy declare that there is a sixth sense the superconscious and through it comes inspiration the universe is motion and friction will eventually bring everything to an end then comes a rest and after that all begins again so long as the skin sky surrounds man that is so long as he identifies himself with his body he cannot see god sunday afternoon there are six schools of philosophy in india that are regarded as orthodox because they believe in the vedas vyasa's philosophy is par excellence that of the upanishads he wrote in sutra form that is in brief algebraical symbols without nominative or verb this caused so much ambiguity that out of the sutras came dualism mono dualism and monism or roaring vedanta and all the great commentators in these different schools were at times conscious liars in order to make the text suit their philosophy the upanishads contain very little history of the doing of any man but nearly all other scriptures are largely personal histories the vedas deals almost entirely with the philosophy religion without philosophy runs into superstition philosophy without religion becomes a dry atheism Vishishta Advaita is qualified Advaita Monism its expounder was Ramanuja 
he says out of the ocean of milk of the vedas vyasa has churned this butter of philosophy the butter to help mankind he says again all virtues and all qualities belong to brahma lord of the universe he is the greatest purusha and brahma neutral is lower or the universe itself madhva is a thorough going dualist or dwaitist he claims that every caste and even women might study the vedas he quotes chiefly from the puranas he says that brahma means vishnu not shiva at all because there is no salvation except through vishnu monday july 8 there is no place for reasoning in madhva's explanation it is all taken from the revelation in the vedas ramanuja says the vedas are the holiest study let the sons of the three upper caste get the sutras and at 8 10 or 11 years of age begin the study which means going to a guru and learning the vedas word for word with perfect intonation and pronunciation tapas is repeating the holy name japa is repeating the holy name through this the devotee rises to the infinite the boat of sacrifice and ceremonies is very frail we need more than that to know brahma which alone is freedom liberty is nothing more than destruction of ignorance and that can only go when we know brahma it is not necessary to go through all these ceremonials to reach the meaning of the vedanta repeating om is enough Seeing difference is the cause of all misery and ignorance is the cause of seeing difference. That is why ceremonials are not needed because they increase the idea of inequality. You practice them to get rid of something or to obtain something. Brahma is without action. Atma is Brahma and we are Atma. Knowledge like this takes of all error. It must be heard, apprehended intellectually and lastly realized. Cogitating is applying reason and establishing this knowledge in ourselves by reason. Realizing is making it a part of our lives by constant thinking of it. This constant thought or dhyanam is all as oil that pours in one unbroken line from vessel to vessel. Dhyanam rules the mind in this thought day and night and so helps us to attain to liberation. Think always so hum so hum this is almost as good as liberation. Say it day and night realization will come as the result of this continuous cogitation. This absolute and continuous remembrance of the Lord is what is meant by bhakti. This bhakti is indirectly helped by all good works. Good thoughts and good works create less differentiation than bad ones. So indirectly they lead to freedom work but give up the results to the Lord knowledge alone can make us perfect he who follows the God of truth with the devotion to him the God of truth reveals himself we are lamps and our burning is what we call life when the supply of oxygen gives out then the life must go out all we can do is to keep the lamp clean life is a product a compound and as such must resolve itself into its elements Tuesday, July 9th, man as Atma is really free, as man he is bound, changed by every physical condition, as man he is a machine with an idea of freedom, but this human body is the best and the human mind the highest mind there is. When a man attains to the Atma state, he can take a body making it to suit himself. He is Abula, this is a statement and must be proved, each one must prove it for himself. We may satisfy ourselves but we cannot satisfy another. Raja Yoga is the only science of religion that can be demonstrated and only what I myself have proved by experience do I teach the full ripeness of reason is intuition but intuition cannot antagonize reason. Work purifies the heart and so leads to Vidya wisdom. The Buddhist said doing good to man and to animals were the only works. 
द ब्राह्मिन सेट दैट वर्शिप एंड ऑल सेरेमोनियल वर इक्वली वर्क एंड प्यूरिफाई द माइंड शंकरा डिक्लेयर दैट ऑल वर्स गुड एंड बैड आर अगेंस्ट नॉलेज एक्शंस टेंडिंग टू इग्नोरेंस आर सिंस नॉट डायरेक्टली बट एज कॉजेज बिकॉज दे टेन टू इनक्रीज द मस एंड राजस विद सत्वा ओनली कम द विजडम वर्चुअस डीड्स टेक्स ऑफ द वेल फ्रॉम नॉलेज एंड नॉलेज अलोन कैन मेक अस सी गॉड knowledge can never be created it can only be discovered and every man who makes a great discovery is inspired only when it is a spiritual truth he brings we call he may profit and when it is on the physical plane we call he may scientific man and we attribute more importance to the former although the source of all truth is one Sankara says Brahma is the essence the reality of all knowledge and that all manifestation as a knower knowing and known are mere imagining in Brahma Ramanuja attributes consciousness to God the real monist attribute nothing not even existence in any meaning that we call we can attach to it Ramanuja declared that God is the essence of conscious knowledge undifferentiated consciousness when differentiated becomes the world Buddhism one of the most philosophical religions in the world spread all through the populace the common people of India what a wonderful culture there must have been among the Aryans 2500 years ago to be able to grasp such ideas Buddha was the only great Indian philosopher who would not recognize caste and not one of his followers remain in India all the other philosophers pondered more or less to social prejudices no matter how high they should still a bit of the vulture remained in them as my master used to say the vulture soars high out of sight in the sky but his eyes is on a bit of carrion on the earth the ancient hindus were wonderful scholars veritable living encyclopedias they said knowledge in books and money in other people's hand is like no money and no knowledge at all sankara was regarded by many as an incarnation of shiva wednesday day july 10th there are 65 million mohammedans in india most of them sufis sufis in identify man with god and through them this idea came into europe they are also called shias they say i am that truth but they have an esoteric as well as an exoteric doctrine although muhammad himself did not hold it assassin has become our word assassin because the old sex of Mohammedanism killed non believers as a part of their creed a pitcher of water has to be present in the Mohammedan worship as a symbol of god filling the universe the hindus believe that there will be 10 divine incarnations nine have been and the 10th is still to come the name of a military and religious order existing in syria in the 11th century and famous for the number of secret murders committed by its members in obedience to the will of their chief the literal meaning of the word is hashish eater and was applied to the order because of their habitual use of this special drug to fortify the murderers for their task Sankara sometimes they resorted to resorts to sophistry in order to prove that the ideas in the books go up uphold his philosophy buddha was more brave and sincere than any teacher he said believe no book vedas are all humbum humbug if they agree with me so much the better for the books i am the greatest book sacrifice and prayer are useless buddha was the first human being to give to the world a complete system of morality he was good for good's sake he loved for love's sake 
Sankara says God is to be reasoned on because the Vedas say so. Reason helps inspiration books and a realized reason or individualized perception. Both are proofs of God. The Vedas are according to him a sort of incarnation of universal knowledge. The proof of God is that he brought forth the Vedas and the proof of the Vedas is that such wonderful books could only have been given out by Brahma. They are the mine of all knowledge and they have come out of him as a man breath out here. Therefore we know that he is infinite in power and knowledge. He may or may not have created the world that is a trifle. To have produced the Vedas is more important. The world has come to know God through the Vedas, no other way there is. And so universal is this belief held by Sankara in the all-inclusiveness of the Vedas that there is even a Hindu proverb that if a man loses his cow, he goes to look for her in the Vedas. Sankara further affirms that obedience to ceremonial is not knowledge. Knowledge of God is independent of moral duties or sacrifice, sacrifice or ceremonial or what we think or do not think just as the stump is not affected when one man takes it for a ghost and another sees it as it is. Vedanta is necessary because neither reasoning nor books can show us God. He is only to be realized by superconscious perception and Vedanta teaches how to attain that. You must get beyond personal God, Isra and reach the Absolute Brahma. God is the perception of every being. He is all there is to be perceived. That we say I is Brahma, but although we day and night perceive Him, we do not know that we are perceiving Him. As so on as we become aware of this truth, all misery goes, so we must get knowledge of the truth. Reach unity, no more duality will come. But knowledge does not come by sacrifice, but by seeking, worshipping, knowing the Atma. Brahma Vidya is the highest knowledge, knowing the Brahma, lower knowledge is science. This is the teaching of the Munda Kup. Mundaka Upanishad or the Upanishad for Sannyasins. There are two sorts of knowledge, principal and secondary. The unessential is that part of the Vedas dealing with worship and ceremonial. Also all secular knowledge. The essential is that by which we reach the Absolute. It the Absolute creates all from its own nature. There is nothing to cause, nothing outside. It is all energy, it is all there is. He who makes all sacrifices to himself, the Atma, he alone knows Brahma. Fools and think outside, worship the highest. Fools think works can give us God. Only those who go through the Susmana, the path of the yogis, reach the Atma. They must go to Guru to learn. Each part has the same nature as the whole. All springs from the Atma. Meditation is the arrow. The whole soul going out to God is the bow which speeds the arrow to its mark. The Atma as finite we can never express the infinite but we are the infinite. Knowing this we argue with no one. Divine wisdom is to be got by devotion, meditation and chastity. Truth alone triumphs and not untruth. Through truth alone the way is spread to Brahma, where alone love and truth are. Thursday, July 11th. Without mother love, no creation could continue. Nothingness is entirely physical, nor yet entirely metaphysical. One presupposes the other and explains the other. All theists agree that there is a background to this visible universe. They differ as to the nature or character of that background. Materialists say there is no background. 
in all religions the superconscious state is identical hindus christians mohammedans buddhists and even those of no creed all have the very same experience when they transcend the body the purest christians in the world were established in india by the apostle thomas about 25 years after the death of jesus this was while the anglo saxons were still savages painting their bodies and living in caves the christians in india once numbered about 3 million but now there are about 1 million Christianity is always propagated by the sword. How wonderful that the disciples of such a gentle soul should kill so much. The three missionary religions are the Buddhist, Mohammedan and Christian. The three older ones, Hinduism, Judaism and Zoroastrianism, never sought to make converts. Buddhist never killed but converted three quarters of the world at one time by pure gentleness. The Buddhists were the most logical agnostics. You can really stop nowhere between nihilism and absolutism. Absolutism. The Buddhists were intellectually all destroyers, carrying their theory to its ultimate logical issue. The Advaitists also worked out their theory to its logical conclusion and reached the absolute one identified unit substance out of which all phenomena are being manifested. Both Buddhists and Advaitists have a feeling of identity and non-identity at the same time. One of these feelings must be false and one true. The Nihilist puts the reality in non identity the realist put the reality in identity and this is the fight which occupies the whole world this is the tug of war the realist ask how does the nihilist get any idea of identity how does the revolving light appear a circle a point of rest alone explain motion the nihilist can never explain the genesis of the delusion that there is a background neither can the idealist explain how the one becomes the many the only explanation must come from beyond the sense plane we must rise to the superconscious to a state entirely beyond sense perception that metaphysical power is the further instrument that the idealist alone can use he can experience the absolute the man vivekananda can resolve himself into the absolute and then come back to the man again for him then the problem is solved and secondly for others for the for he can show the way to others thus religion begins where philosophy ends the good to the world will be that what is now super conscious for us will in ages to come be the conscious for all religion is therefore the highest work the world has and because man has unconsciously felt this he has clung through all the ages to the idea of religion religion the great milk cow has given many kicks but never mind it gives a great deal of milk the milkman does not mind the kick of the cow which gives much milk religion is the greatest child to be born the great moon of realization let us feed it and help it grow and it will become a giant king desire and king knowledge fought and just as the latter was about to be defeated a child was born to him vedanta and saved the victory to him then love bhakti and knowledge married and lived happy ever after love concentrate all the power of the will without effort as when a man falls in love with a woman the path of devotion is natural and pleasant philosophy is taking the mountain stream back to its source by force it is a quicker method but very hard philosophy says check everything devotion says give up all to the stream how eternal self surrender it is a longer way but easier and happier 
Kind am I forever henceforth, whatever I do, it is thou doing it. No more is there any me or mine, having no money to give, no brains to learn, no time to practice yoga. To thee, O oh sweet one, I give myself to thee, my body and mind. No amount of ignorance or wrong ideas can put a barrier between the soul and God. Even if there be no God, still hold fast to love. It is better to die seeking a God than as a dog seeking only carrion. Choose the highest ideal and give your life up to that. Death being so certain, it is the highest thing to give up life for a great purpose. Love will painlessly attain to philosophy. Then after knowledge comes prabhakti, supreme devotion. Knowledge is critical and makes a great fuss over everything. But love says, God will show his real nature to me and accepts all. Rabia, Rabia sits upon her bed. Rabia sick upon her bed by two saints was visited. Holy Malik, Hassan, wise man of mark in Muslim eyes. Hassan said, Whose prayer is pure? Will God's chastisements endure? Malik, from a deeper sense, uttered his experience. He who loves his master's choice will in chest chastisement rejoice. Rabia saw some selfish will in their maxims lingering still and replied, O man of grace, he who sees his master's face will not in his prayers recall that he is chastised at all. Friday, July 12th, Sankara's commentary, 4th Vyasa Sutra, Atma is the aim of all. The Ishvara is to be known from the Vedanta, all Vedanta point, all Vedas point to him who is the cause, the creator, preserver and destroyer. Ishvara is the unification of the trinity known as Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, which stands at the head of the Hindu pantheon. Thou art our father who takes us to the other shore of the dark ocean, invocation to Ishvara. The Vedas cannot show you Brahma. You are that already. They can only help to take away the veil that hides the truth from our eyes. The first veil to vanish is ignorance, and when that is gone, sin goes, next desire ceases, selfishness ends, and all misery disappears. This cessation of ignorance can only come when I know that God and I are one. In other words, identify yourself with Atma, not with human limitations. Disidentify yourself with the body and all pain will cease. This is the secret of healing. The universe is a case of hypnotization. Dehypnotize yourself and cease to suffer. In order to be free, we have to pass through vice to virtue and then get rid of both. Tamas is to be conquered by Rajas, both are to be submerged in Sattva, then go beyond the three qualities, reach a state where you are very breathing is a prayer. Reach a state where your very breathing is a prayer. Whenever you learn, gain anything from another man's words, know that you had the experience in a previous existence because experience is the only teacher. With all powers comes further misery, so kill desire. Getting any desire is like putting a stick into a nest of harness where again is finding out that desires are but gilded. Gilded balls of poison, mind is not God, Sankara, Tattvam Asi, Aham Brahmasmi, that thou art, I am Brahma. When a man realizes this, all the knots of his heart are cut asunder, all his doubts vanish. Shearlessness, shearlessness is not possible. 
As long as we have even God over us, we must be God. What is disjoint will be forever disjoint. If you are separate from God, then you can never be one with Him and vice versa. If by virtue you are joined to God, when that ceases, disjunction will come. The junction is eternal and virtue only helps to remove the veil. We are dead free. We must realize it. Whom the self chooses means we are the self and choose ourselves. Whenever you know any person, place or thing, you know it because you can remember it. If you cannot, you say that you do not know it and you can only remember that which you experienced before. So, experience is the only teacher. Does seeing depend upon our own efforts or does it depend upon something outside? It depends upon ourselves. Our efforts take off the dust. The mirror does not change. There is neither knower, knowing nor known. He who knows that he does not know, he knows it. He who has a theory knows nothing. The idea that we are bound is only an illusion. So, I end this video here. Thank you my dear friends for watching and listening this talk. Thank you so much. Please like, share and comment the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you my dear friends. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.